Whoa. Okay. Here we are, we're live. We are back. Right. So Chunky's the strongest fuck. I was about to say Chunky's on, on that side. I'm not junky at the minute. Um right, so we're gonna go into the next QA then. Um of a few questions that people have asked recently. Um, also, people have asked when we're going to do these again as well. So it's nice to know that people are listening to them and taking them on board. Um, and for anyone you know that's listening right now, any questions you have, please you know ask us. Drop it into the into the Facebook group or or ask us in person or whatever, um, and we can add them to the list for the next one. Um, so we'll fire straight into them so we know exactly where we're at with things. So does does being too lean affect strength? This is something, to be honest, that I've been asked quite a few times. You're going to be able to detail this a bit better. But I think a lot of people think that you need a bit of body fat to be decent and strong, man. But what would you say is the way to look at this? First of all, defined lean. What's like my lean would be completely inappropriate for someone else. Yeah. Uh, so like... I just competed and six weeks out, people were like, oh, you're shredded. And I'm like, no, I'm nowhere near. Yeah. Uh, and I never lost strength up until last week. I was still hitting my PBs and whatnot. It's just, uh, so in, in terms of performance, when you look on weight class athletes, they get ridiculously lean and they don't lose performance for that specific day, event, whatever. Yeah. But it's not all for training. So you obviously your recovery is going to suffer, your sleep is going to suffer, uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, you just need to define what what's lean. You can be Mariusz Pujinowski lean and perform extremely well. Bear in mind, you probably will have to supplement your body with a lot of stuff just to kind of tolerate the intensity of workouts you need to go through. Uh, but that being said, you don't need to be necessarily fat to, to be strong which yeah. I believe all of guys I train have proved. They just get leaner and stronger. And I have guys from all over the planet. So uh, just this uh, last week, Josh competed at 110.3 kilos. So, and, and I just laughed at him. I was like, you, you could just take your T-shirt off and go in under 110 kilo class. But Josh is Josh, he don't give, don't give a damn. Uh, so he competed in 125 kilo group. Yeah. And he absolutely roasted every single one of them there. There was there were guys at 140, 160, 100, like whatever, you know, open class. Every everyone 125 and, and about, and he just did 320 kilo road deadlift in his first ever deadlift comp at 23 years of age, at less than two years of training. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I actually need to put a photo of him how he started. He was just little fat blob. <laughs> Yeah, it was hundred and something kilos of just soft mass. Uh, we got him down to ninety something. Uh, predominantly, when you're leaner, you respond much better. You respond much better to nutrients. You respond much better to training. Your recovery. You don't have so much body fat that converts your testosterone to estrogen and all those kind of things. So you actually improve your ability to be more efficient in what you want to do. Mm. So uh, can you be too lean? Yeah, hundred percent. Uh, but if you get more than, I would say, 15% of body fat at any point of your life, you are not doing yourself any kind of service. It's not going to improve your ability to get stronger, 100%. Uh, if anything, you, you sooner or later, you're going to be kind of affected mentally because you're just not going to look like, you're not going to like yourself, how you look. You can tell me whatever the hell you want. You It just happens. And... Uh, Getting too lean is inefficient a way of dealing with your nutrition. Mm. So if you are per for performance-based athlete, you need to know what you're doing. Uh, someone's knocking on my door. Uh, but uh, what what would be your, your own opinion, your own experience? Because you had to make weight. Did it actually make you leaner or was it, uh, sorry, weaker? Or was it... Uh, water cut part that actually messed you up well, rather than body fat loss i for me i went as i went through my like i'll go to respond to that quickly you you chat along say again you you carry on i'll go to respond to my door quickly all ah, right yeah yeah so 
yeah for, for when i did my 90s like my 90s prep i was literally going through like my first season where it was um i was under 90 and i had to sort of like reach 90 and then i went through to obviously being over 90 and then i got myself into a place where i looked like a bodybuilder being on stage <laughs> as i was going into competition and as much as yeah it feels good as much as it feels like it's um i guess i felt i felt like i was in a good place i i feel like i was suffering the main thing that i was suffering with was the fact that i was depleting my had to, had to deplete my calories too much um and and in effect i then had like real like fucking sore knees like so i know mine was a nutrient thing that i was suffering with yeah, so your probably approach was a bit extreme as well. Yeah, but it but it had to become too extreme. I mean, obviously, I, I, I was learning as I was doing it, ultimately, because I had no one guiding me or anything like that. Plus, I, when I first started Strongman, I was just enjoying it. I wasn't, do you know what I mean? I wasn't taking it so serious. I was just playing. Um, but as I got bigger and as I become, like, leaner, I was just saying a second ago when you ran off, you were like, I felt like I was going on stage as a bodybuilder because, obviously, I looked so good. And everyone used to always take the piss saying, oh, you're going on stage or you competing in strongman. Yeah. But it's just because I was at my limit. But the thing is, obviously, I had to lose a little bit of muscle to be in that category. I couldn't lose any more. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So this is, for me, the thing that I always teach people, I actually did a video on um, this the other day. I've not shared it yet, though. But the thing is, I teach people is to grow into the sport as opposed to, dip, like, 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 you know, get leaner because at the end of the day, your body grows, right? As you get bigger, stronger, faster, your body grows. Mm. So, so, you know, I mean, people might have a different way of looking at this, but all these people that are keep cutting down, like cutting down, cutting down, that's not progressing. That's not progressing yourself, is it? Because how can you progress if you're constantly having to be under a limit? Um, yeah. I mean, that might, that might just be me because of my last year, that I've sort of like gone through that stage. I mean, now we're trying to push for over 105, aren't we? But it's, that might just be me at this stage. I'm out of the minute, but I'm pretty sure that makes sense for every single strength athlete. So if anybody's hovering around that sort of like, they're just under their weight category, push them up to the maximum of it. So for, for me, what I hear is it wasn't so much leanness that held you back, but actually squeezing in a weight class that could have been detrimental to your performance yeah. had you not pushed down your weight you could still perform at really high level being still very lean yeah 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 if i hadn't had to get under the the amount yeah but, but that's where and i guess that's that part isn't it where you get to a point where at what what point do you then say i'm going up now rather than down you know for me as a rough rough figure to give people i always say like for the for, for an 80 category 85 is is too much you know for a 90 95 is too much it's a very rough estimate to give but i'm just trying to say if you get to that midway point go to the next one yeah but the truth is when you look on best athletes on planet which are most likely gymnasts pound for pound yeah they are ridiculously lean and they yeah. perform really well you know uh yeah it can be detrimental if you don't let me rephrase that. If you are still in calorie deficit and lean, yeah, you can start losing strengths. But yeah. if you can maintain that leanness by being efficient at beta oxidation, which is using your body fat for energy most of the time rather than glycogen and everything else, you can still perform extremely well. And like I said, one of the best examples is probably Mariusz Pucinowski. He was just ridiculously good yeah. shape. Yeah. All his career through. And he's still in great shape. He's not as lean as he was when he was doing strongman. But bear in mind, guy was doing kickboxing, bodybuilding, all sorts. And he just never had that need to be extremely out of shape to get stronger. Strength is developed through neurological pathways. It's not developed through how much body fat you carry. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, the bigger you are, the more ability you have to get stronger. But let's be honest, pound for pound, it doesn't necessarily translate to the bigger you are, the stronger you're going to get. Yeah. It's down to how much practice you have put in, how much good practice you have put in, and how well you recover from beating yourself up pretty much every day. Yeah. So 
leanness is not as important for performance as feeding yourself right to maintain that leanness instead of starving yourself down to look like I don't even know what what you can compare uh, yourself to but uh, no, it doesn't have effect on performance unless you are doing something ridiculously stupid and just starve yourself and try to perform well. Like I said, when I was competing, I, I didn't lose any any performance like at all. I used to at the beginning when I didn't understand what I'm doing, whereas mm -hmm. now I just get stronger. <laughs> like yeah. week, week out of show, I can still do whatever the hell I, I need to do. But your body is getting better, right? Because <laughs> you're doing it yeah, properly. Because I just do what I have done for like 10, 15 years. Yeah. You know, whereas people get in a gym for first six weeks and then they want to get shredded. I'm like, you, you can get shredded, but there's nothing to show underneath. Why, why do you bother? So, yeah. yeah. So I think really then the, the answer to that is eat as much as you can and stay as lean as you, as you can so that you're not deficit in your food, isn't it? Yeah. So I, I think a question could be better, you know. Like specify what kind of training are you actually going through? Specify what kind of uh, performance are you trying to get out? And there should be some timetable as well. Staying too lean for too long is that's where issues become apparent, especially for females. You shouldn't really get under twenty percent of body fat, which yeah sounds tragic, but for women to to stay healthy, you you need to carry a, carry a fair amount of body fat. So yeah, whereas yeah. for guys, you you don't need that. Yeah. So specify what kind of gender you are, what kind of sports you're involved in. When are, are you trying to get in a weight class so, and you're struggling or is this just something you kind of think about that would be good to just walk around lean all the time? Uh, and all those things need to be tied in place. And then, let's be honest, being lean is not detrimental to performance. Look at all the boxers, cage fighters, gymnasts, crossfitters. You know, they look jacked to eyeballs and they are performing extremely well. Yeah. So Especially it's, it, guys. Yeah, it's it's not that being too lean is detrimental. It's being too lean at wrong approach, which is just starving yourself. Whereas yeah. you can be in great physic physical appearance if you eat well for the performance, it's not gonna be harmful for your uh for the outcome you're trying to get out of your training yeah yeah agree sweet next one then is this is quite a vague one obviously but what's the maximum amount of testosterone you can use per week i'll, well, let, you, I'll let you decide on this one uh, well that's an interesting question like for anyone's personal choice you can pick whatever the hell you want um, and then deal with the consequences. What would be optimal is a different question. What's maximal? It's whatever you can afford to, you know. Uh, I've seen ridiculous numbers which make absolutely no sense. And it's like trying to have 70 liters of petrol crammed into 50 liter petrol tank. It's just yeah. not going to work. Yeah. You, you're just going to spill it over and it's going to be all over the place. And if someone goes around and lights a match, you're just going to drop dead. So same, testosterone is a stupid drug to begin with. Why would anyone take it? Uh, you only need a small amount of it just to maintain your health, confidence. So testosterone is not even anabolic, side effects of testosterone are. So taking testosterone to get some kind of performance benefits is just retarded. It, it just doesn't do that. I you think know, it, you, I think it just comes from the old school, doesn't it? Like people go, if any, if you ask an old school person that someone's on steroids, they go, "Oh, he's taking testosterone." But that's that's just what they think. This, this is the best. Test is best. What people don't realize, it, yeah, it comes from. I don't want to tell. I don't want to get the name wrong, but basically, when test became the king of steroids and whatnot, it was because the guy. Who was selling it was promoting it as the best drug yeah, out there. I remember hearing that. And that was it. I, I don't remember the name now, but that was about it. It was just saying this is the best thing you can do, and and we know now we have over hundreds of years of research that that is not the best thing you can do. Yeah. It's anything is just the worst thing you can do if you want to do, if you want to use it for performance based outcomes. Uh, you only need it's androgen, so it makes you a male. How much of a fucking male you need to be? Yeah, yeah. You know, you've got a pair of testicles, a beard. That's it. You don't need any more of that. Yeah. <laughs> like the more you take, it's not going to 
get you any better. Uh, it's just so, having that healthy amount, it, it, at least, isn't it? Like, so for people so, who are low on it, having do it your blood checks. Better, like, I get a lot of questions. What's the best? healthiest and first cycle and whatnot and this is that and i never mentioned test and they're like yeah but i heard test is the best and like no it's not 19 fucking 45 anymore we have way we have more knowledge way beyond that do something come like more specific do you want to get stronger go for some dhts you, do you want to get bigger if you're a skinny little thing go for no 19s if if you are struggling with understanding what the hell you want to do, uh, just go for something which is safe-ish, kind of your Primo Bolans uh, and maybe Anwar, which is not probably the best choice, but Primo would be probably the easiest one. Yeah. Uh, but it's just from like, specifically to that question, how, how what is the biggest amount you can take is whatever the hell you can afford. Yeah. You're going to drop that by end of it, but <laughs> and literally there is no, like, let me rephrase that. Uh, very few people out there need more than three milligrams per kilo to have ridiculously good responses. That, and like I said, by response, I mean what it actually does. It turns you more into the male, gives you the like confidence, and you, you're not depressed every freaking two days and whatnot. So more than that is really not necessary. Like literally, if if someone let's take Thor for example, he should like two hundred kilo body weight. Anything about six hundred mil, milligrams of test a week for him would be overkill because it would not yeah. give any benefit whatsoever. Mm. Like what zero. what was that calculation? Three mil per kilo. Three milligrams per lean kilos. So right. if if you're a fat mess, you you need way less than you think. Ah, got you. Yeah, of course. You're talking lean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because like, let's be honest. So this is where <laughs> you understand how it works in your body. If you have a lot of body fat, you have a lot of aromatized enzymes which will convert testosterone to estrogen and whatnot. So you end up with having little titties and and God knows what else. So you need to get lean first to actually milk out the benefits out of testosterone. If you are big mess. Testosterone is probably not the best choice for you. You you need to find something else. Uh, and again, that's like, where people get all stupid, don't they? Like, you know, your big guys don't eat well. They just want to lift heavy weights and they like, take loads of testosterone. Yeah, take a lot of testosterone, get blood pressure issues, get uh, little butter tits. Hits. And then you get floppy dick at the end of it. Uh, and also it's that blame, oh, this doesn't work for me. Like, no, your body was not meant for that. You should have yeah. got to your body ready to actually take the thing first. Uh, but, having that structured approach. Like I've, as, as the highest I've seen was uh, obscene amount, like bottles and bottles a week. Um, the guy is still alive. <laughs> Ow. Uh, and, but, but yeah, you, you're more likely to die from bloody alcohol poisoning than, than gear. Uh, gear works. That's why people have issues with it because it, it increases your body weight, then increases your blood pressure, and this is that. If you don't look after your health, it's going to harm you. But for testosterone, like I said, it's fairly inefficient to take anything more than three milligrams per kilo a week. That would be absolute top limit. Uh, anyone should ever consider and then top everything else up with more specific things. Do you want to get stronger? Do you want to get uh, pure anabolic response where you just grow your muscle? Uh, testosterone is not going to do that. It's just going to hold shitloads of water on you. Uh, effects you get from testosterone is from the side effects that it converts to estrogen. Estrogen is really uh, good for growth, for developing strengths. But if you have way too much of it, like I said, you'll have a lot of side effects. You're going to sit on a, at home, cry about watching Bambi and uh, lactating and all sorts. You, you don't want to do that. Uh, so avoid... T- testosterone is not a great drug. Just just get that in your head. Yeah, testosterone, you're going to look it, into things, like you say, look at the performance ones. And ideally, you, you don't need more than one milligram. 8, 0.8 to 1 mg per kilo a week is what your body would produce naturally. So if you don't have normal testosterone levels, that's what doctor would prescribe you. And that's going to work great for anyone, literally. You know, for women, obviously, it's completely different. Just, just don't think about that. Women produce like something like all points. It's literally just a spit of testosterone. <laughs> and they don't need that. Uh, well, not for men, for, for men, even just one milligram per kilo a week, 
will 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 work great. And then you can add everything else on top of that, more specific. Uh, but just trying to take as much as possible. It's like I said, like like that uh, analogy with petrol tank. You can put as much as you want. Your body can only use so much. Mm, you know, be specific time, specific enzymes involved, uh, specific kind of mechanical stimulus, and all those kind of things to make it efficient. Just because you take more doesn't mean it's going to work better. If any, if anything, it's going to put you under more systemic fatigue. That within four to six weeks of doing that, you will feel so lethargic and so just worn out that you'll just give up on everything and just go and play table tennis instead you know well just don't just don't do that and then, and then blame blame the gear because the gear did it yeah, gear didn't work like no you took so much gear that you were sleeping at home and not doing anything at all you were going into gym and the whole effect. Because your blood pressure was through the roof and and all those kind of things you the more you can get from least amount, the better, because that means you can milk it for longer. Mm. You know, it's like driving a car. If if you can, if you get a car with six gears or four gears, and the one with six gears will probably last you a bit longer because you don't need to max out those bloody revs just just to get some kind of speed in it. Yeah. You know, you preserve your engine for longer. Same yeah. same with gears. It's the lower amount you can take to get most out of it, the better. And it's for that to happen, you need to get leaner and need to be more specific with what you actually want to get out of it. Mm. Don't just take something because biggest guy in the gym said you, you need to have that. And it's just no. Uh, and like I said, there's so much stuff out there. We have over 100 years of studies on testosterone alone. Uh, it's it's just making you more of a man. It really doesn't make you don't, grow. <laughs> don't be stupid and think that's the way because everyone thinks more, 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 don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Right, next, next one. Is intermittent fasting good for strength? This this actually comes from someone who he asked me the other week, like intermittent fasting, like because he said that his mate does it. He's quite a big lad, and how does he survive without food in the daytime? But he says he feels great from doing it. This is where people are delusional. You really can survive weeks without food. We carry around, uh, I forgot the precise numbers, but it was like something of 40,000 calories of, for someone under 10% body fat, you carry around 40,000 calories of fat on you. So that can last you God knows how much time. Mm. You know, uh, strength is not predominantly determined on, on what you eat. It's determined of how you train. So mm. you'll have... Uh, let's take example, uh, Russian strength athletes. Russians are poor. They don't have money. They don't have McDonald's. They don't have takeaways. They don't. They can't go to buffet for bloody three quid and load themselves up. And it's just not going to happen. So most of them will eat probably breakfast, then go train all day, and then eat mum's mashed potatoes and bloody some dumplings at night. That's it. But they train like an asshole. You know what I mean? They train both of the wall. It's mentality that gets them strong. It's not food. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just because you have this notion that you need to eat every three hours and this and that. It's, it's, first of all, it's not true to begin with. Uh, you know, uh, there is this stupid idea that some people still believe that you only can absorb so many protein per sitting. No, you can actually absorb 80% of your daily nutrient intake in one sitting. So for someone like myself, uh, I need six and a half thousand calories a day to maintain my body weight because I'm extremely active compared to anyone else. Anyone at my body weight should not eat more than 4,000 calories. Let's be honest on that. So if I was to eat 4,000 calories in one sitting, my body will easily deal with it. Yeah. You know, the stupid notion that you can you can only absorb 330 or something, whatever they used to say, grams of protein per meal, it's, it's just not truth. Uh, when you are extremely out of shape, and I suggest a lot of guys as well, do some fasting on your rest days because you need to teach your body to tap into the body fat reserves. There's no point of just eating uh, all the time when you're out of shape already. So, and you uh, will definitely benefit from doing fasting if you are out of shape. Uh, and you, you, you have a lot of different things as well involved in, into that. Uh, but it's not going to make you weaker because, like I said, you have so much of energy on your body to help you to deal with uh, damage you create from training, 
and so on and so forth. So usually guys who fast, they will not fast their own trading anyway. They will fast half of the day and then their own trading, they will still have their nutrients and whatnot. And then the rest of the day, they will just do whatever, like let's not eat again. Uh, it's great weight, how to control your body weight uh, and all those kind of things. It's not detrimental to performance until it does become bet- detrimental to performance. Uh, mm-hmm. But that's when you're extremely lean, you know? Uh, but but yeah, fasting that's not because is, of the calories that are going in, then is it? It's because you're at the point where you're too lean. Yeah, be, because you're at a point where you your body just don't have any excess energy anymore to use to rebuild your tissue, replenish your glycogen, and so on and so forth. So your yeah. your body can actually create glycogen from your uh, muscle tissue, uh, your, your body fat, and all those kind of things. In a long term, uh, you you won't be able to perform at your best by fasting. But I would suggest anyone who's struggling with like physical appearance, just try it now and then. I have a lot of guys who are struggling to lose body fat, just fast for the rest days, as they'll have maybe three meals a day. You know, so they'll have a micronutrient smoothie to pick starts a day and then don't eat for like six to 12 hours and whatever. And then just eat before and after training and go to bed. I, I could per- personally, you know, like the way my day runs, I could personally do that. <laughs> Because like yeah, the, the that's morning. how I used to do it. I was doing powerlifting because, like, first of all, I didn't have any money to buy food. Uh, I would leave house at eight o'clock in the morning. I would have some kind of shitty breakfast, whatever, some fucking cheap sausage on the bread. Uh, then go train. Then after training, I would go to my friend's house, whose uh, mom used to work in a butcher shop, so I had a really nice meal, mm. and that's it. And I was best powerlifting in my fucking country. Yeah, you know because our training was extremely efficient it's not like you can have the best nutrition plan out there if your training is not doing what it's supposed to do progressive overload make sure you don't injure yourself make sure you don't bloody lift as heavy as you can every single workout and whatnot let those neurological adaptations to uh, come in place you're gonna get stronger it does not depend on a food food is just a minor tool yeah you will get way more out of eating better uh, if you're not weight restricted or, or whatever, those kind of things. But fasting is not going to make you weaker if you have so much extra energy on you to, mm. that you need to deal with. And let's be honest, people who fast for performance, they don't understand what the hell they're doing in this situation to begin with. Mm. So what they do on days they don't fast, they eat nutrients that just cause shitloads of inflammation, they just feel lethargic. They just like brain fog and all those kind of things. So then fasting is even much better than for someone who is eating highly nutritious foods because it just gives them gives time for body to recover. So you produce more gross hormone, which releases catecholamines, which releases your uh, body fat into bloodstream, start using for energy. Like I said, you train your body to use different energy systems, and it actually can be beneficial on someone like a strong man on a calm day, when you are so nervous all day that you just don't want to eat. And someone who has used eating every two hours will probably suffer a bit than someone who has used yeah. fasting because yeah. they just can't switch those energy systems. Well, that's the fish. thing half the time, though, isn't it? You know when, like, people say they've not had enough and they have a shit session? More more than anything, it's probably just the habit of their body eating, isn't it? Yeah. It's, like, yeah. it's more of a mind flick sort of thing. Well, Let's be that, like, it's that great. There's chemical anyway, isn't there, that gets released? Yeah, you, you just brought up this, uh, what I had this morning. So alarm goes off and you are late. Yeah, you're on this. Yeah, it doesn't matter how much fucking food you ate. You owe so much energy if you're late somewhere. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Same with somebody who goes to gym and like, oh, I don't have my intra workout. I can't train today. No, you're just fucking pussy, mate. Yeah. Jesus Christ. It's like <laughs> if you can't train because you don't have your intro. I've seen that in real life. Oh, I haven't got my pre workout and my intro workout, and and you look at them like, what on earth? Jesus yeah. Christ, you would get magic, a slap. If you, magic juice. You go to a decent gym, you would get a slap for just talking like this. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's definitely mental, you know. They have used to this obsession that I need to have these five meals, and only then I can train really good. Like, no, I, I often train without any food, you know, uh, or I often eat very close to my training sessions or, or whatnot. It doesn't affect me if my mind is clear, mm. you know? 
But if you walk in and something happened at home or something happened with your business or whatnot, it doesn't matter how many good meals you had, you will feel lethargic. You will just not be focused. Yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, and like I said, uh, one of the things that fasting do, it gives you a bit of mental clarity. If your nutritional strategies are way off, on a days you're not going to eat, your body is not dealing with this nut- uh, nutrient abundance that you put in that is not, not actually giving you any kind of energy and it feels much better on, on those days mm. than you just eating pizzas and bloody tuna sandwiches and God knows what else, you know. Yeah. Uh, so fasting is not detrimental to performance. Mm. Your approach to training is if you're coming in the gym and you're not focused, no matter what you've eaten on that day, it's going to mess you up. Yeah, yeah. Thing is, it goes both ways, doesn't it? Like when you're stressed, it doesn't matter how well you eat or not. It's, it's and let's be honest, when you're on gear, it doesn't matter what you eat. <laughs> no, no. If that person who is fasting is smashing gear in, it can literally not eat anything and he'll yeah. still perform really good and he'll still get better performance outcomes than any natural guy, girl, whatever out there. Yeah. As soon as you start taking, there are actual studies showing you don't need to move. They've had people in like medical settings, like literally suffering from bro- broken back or whatever, and they would give them gear. And after six weeks of not even moving, they've gained muscle. Yeah. You know, that's how gear works. It, it's just stupid to ignore that. So then you can argue if it's better when they actually eat well better. But I would always suggest anyone get lean first, get. Get your body for percentage down to around 10% and then see where you can actually take your physique and performance rather than... Then at least that way, your body's responding healthily, isn't it, and, and correctly? Yeah, yeah. everything changes. Physiology changes drastically and then, then you can get away with eating pizzas and whatnot and don't, you don't need to do fasting. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing, though. Fasting, fasting and eating shit food doesn't really, doesn't really count, does it? Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. So last one then that we'll just cover quickly is mindset with dealing with injuries. Um, say again? Oh, you're dealing with your injuries. Well, I, 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 I could probably tell you that. But no, I guess it's there's a few ways we can answer this though. But when you've got, if you've got an injury, it's important that you take advice from people and don't just guess your way through. In fact, look at what happened to me the other week before Arnold's, you know, yes, I wanted to do Arnold's still, and it's a, it's a big show. And I was, I was all, you know, looking forward to it. I had a shit prep um, and did all right. <laughs> and that again, proves what we were saying a minute ago about the last question. When, if your head's in it and then you fucking, you're going to do good. But yeah. I think, like, with, with injuries and stuff, you've got to take them on the chin, right? <laughs> we're play, if, we're play, if we're playing with fire, you're going to get burnt at some point. And I think that's... For me, I, I mean, when I tore my hamstring not long ago, luckily it was only a tear. It was a grade one tear. But you have to sort of, like, take it on the chin because of the stuff we do. And for me, it was the first time I've had, ever had a muscle tear. But at the end of the day you have to look at the positive that it wasn't as bad as it probably could have been. Plus focus on getting recovered because, you know, it's not the, it's not the, it's not the end of the road, is it? When you hit an injury, I mean, look how many people have had injuries and then come back and won stuff. And, you know, all, all your top strong man have fucking torn biceps, torn hamstrings, whatever else. And I think it's just about staying focused, isn't it? Another well, thing, everyone gets injured. This is what people kind of ignore. Like, mm. look, Mateusz Kiedyszkowski, how many? Like, nearly two yeah. years out. Yeah. Actually, a year and a half out. He's only going to compete soon. Uh, every single person gets injured. If you're a bodybuilder, you're most likely going to get ill during your prep. Everyone gets ill. Mm. But then you have people who are like, okay, I'm going to take day off from my dieting and whatnot and just let myself recover from the illness. Or I'm going to push through and... You just completely ruin everything. Yeah. Uh, same with same with an injury. You need to be like realistic. Is this just a minor kind of setback, or is this is this really something serious that I need to sit back and kind of sort out now and just deal with times that I won't be able to compete? But I would suggest strongly 
don't think that you just need to start taking more drugs and run through it. Yeah. Definitely not the way. Yeah. A lot of people do is that, oh, I pulled this, I'm just going to smash more of that. And so they might even end up competing and do really well. But the consequences, long-term consequences of not dealing with that injury in the most efficient way uh, can completely take you out from competing ever again. Just I guess it's you... the mindset part of it, though, isn't it? If you tell yourself that I'm injured, so I'm going to take drugs, then you think that's the answer all the time, and then you're always going to do that. Because yeah. well, that's why you have so many guys who have reached elite level. They get injured, and they're back within four weeks. Mm. Just to get injured again. And yeah. they are back two weeks just to get injured again. Yeah. I'm like, why don't you get that what you are doing for your recovery is not, not doing you any good? You know, yeah. but there, there is this, I think, like nearly a social pressure that who can get somewhere quicker? Who's going to deadly 300 kilos quicker? Who's going to deadly 400 kilos quicker? Who can yeah. recover faster? Like, no one cares. Yeah. If you do something in a very short period of time, but then you completely disappear because you ruined yourself by trying to shorten the time that's actually required. Mm. You first of all set a really bad example to people who are following you because they think they need to do what you did. Yeah, uh, and yeah. second of all, you're, you're really compromising your long-term health. And if you are doing any kind of sport and haven't realized that we have so much information available now that you can literally f- compete at high level until you're 50, 60. You know, uh, and if you haven't realized that, that you still have plenty of time, even if you take two, three, four months out of training to come back and compete at a really high level. Uh, yeah, you're going to be one of those guys who just gets injured all the time and then sits on a sofa and cries about that. Oh, I was once this and that, and I could have done this, but it's not for me anymore. I'm like, no, just be reasonable. Uh, and, and just, don't do these stupid things that, that everyone does. Just take more thread. Oh god. <laughs> yeah. Painkiller. But I think I think the big thing there for me is to to turn to somebody else. Like, yeah. you know, there's always there's always somebody else that knows more than you, or even just have value in their thoughts. It's like the stuff that I'll run past you sometimes. I know the answer, but you run it past yeah. someone because you value what they say and you just want them to go. Yeah, you're doing the right thing, you know. Yeah, let's let's be, let's be smart on this because of X reason, you know. And it's just at the end of the day, when you're in that panic moment of fuck, I'm, everything's crumbling, you just need someone to pat you on the back sometimes and say it's all it's, it's all right. It, it's funny, like I have a lot of mentors as well, uh, and I often send message or email or something, and then so, so there's one of them who don't even reply anymore. Then he will reply after four days. It's like, did you get the answer? I'm yeah. like, yep. As soon as I send that email, I got the answer. It's like, yep. You I asked it. yourself the question anyway. Yeah. As, as soon as I like typed it up, sent it, and I'm like, why did I send that? I know it. And because it has happened so many times now, when like I, I message or email something uh, and I get a feedback back, and I'm like, yeah, I already thought about that. It's like, yeah, I knew you're gonna do that. It's so like, I, I've got all my trust. No, now he don't, doesn't even reply anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he just sends me uh, like a message after a week or so. He's like, did you do this? I'm like, yeah, I did. I'm like, he says like, yeah, I thought you were going to figure it out. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, but it's just sometimes just putting it on a piece of paper. Yeah. You know, yeah. sit down, right. This happened because of this, because of that. What, what's it, is it important for me to actually compete now whilst I'm injured or whatever the hell I am, you know, uh, Lauren, Lauren Chalet, you know, uh, last World's Strongest Man he did was supposed to be his last ever comp. Yeah. But he yeah. ruptured his Achilles tendon. Yeah. So he took, what, a year and a half, nearly two years off yeah. just to rebuild himself and compete one more time just to finish on his terms. Yeah. It didn't rush back in, you know, oh, I've fucked it up and, and I need to jump back in. No, he actually rebuilt his body and rebuilt his strengths to make sure he gives one more last performance for everyone who really appreciates him competing. Yeah. You know, uh, that, he's that, smart that's, and he, he's not going to rush it, is he? He knows he's that's, that's being mature, you, you know. Uh, like I said, there is feelings that there is social pressure of doing everything quick. Yeah, uh, but you you really shouldn't, you know. If someone says like, "Oh, I did this in so many weeks," and you're taking it longer, like, yeah, it takes me longer. That's it. 
mm-hmm. you know, don't rush it because like I said, what we know now can drastically increase any kind of participation in any kind of sport. So you see like Mark Felix and whatnot. How is it? 50 odd years old? What, what is he now? Yeah, 54, is he? 55? Yeah, and it doesn't slow down. He just keeps yeah. going. You, you know, it doesn't think if you're like in your 20s, in your 30s, or even in your 40s, and you think, oh, shit, I got injured. I just need to slam in more gear just to compete this one more show because I don't know how many shows I've got left. You probably got another 10 years in you. Yeah. Let's be honest. You know, yeah. sit down, relax, get that, let that injury heal because otherwise, like I said, you can end up injuring yourself so bad that it will not let, not only affect your performance, but your life. And who wants to be crippled? Probably nobody. Yeah, nobody thinks yeah. about that when they are geared up to eyeballs and can't think straight. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's very true. Right, we need to wrap because I've just seen the time and we're going to waffle on forever. Uh, yeah, yeah, good. it's good to be back. Yeah, I was just about to say exactly the same thing. It's good to be back on cam. Um, and I, I need one of them chunky t shirts as well. I need to, <laughs> he's putting uh, 10 kilos on actually. Yeah, you have to qualify for them, don't you? Yeah, it only comes in 3XL. <laughs> right, I'm, I'm only a double sometimes. <laughs> Sweet, awesome. Um, but guys, hope you got a lot out of the answers and stuff. Uh, fire away with your next questions, and we will see you on the next one. Peace. Ooh.